<laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first Baxter Student Ambassador Program webinar of 2019. Presenting for us today is Alexis Emerson, one of our BSAP finalists from Algonquin College. Hi, Alexis. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I'm good, thanks. So just before we get started, I'd like to quickly introduce some of the people attending today's webinar. We have Andrea Dixon, professor of the School of Hospitality and Tourism at Algonquin College, Raquel Queensborough from the Jamaica Tourist Board, and Carol Greenwood from the Tourism Industry Associ Association of Ontario. Louise Paquette from the Jamaica Tourist Board is on the line with us as well. And here at Baxter Media, we have Wendy McClung, Emily McClung, Ian Stalker, and I'm Dan McDonald. So for everyone viewing today's webinar on the computer, if you have any questions during the presentation, just type them into the Q&A box found in your Zoom toolbar, and those questions will be answered after the presentation has finished. Okay, Alexis, if you'd like to go ahead and share your screen, you can start whenever you're ready. Perfect, sounds good, thank you. You're very welcome. There we go. Okay, perfect. As they say in Jamaica, Wagwana, and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for joining me for my Baxter presentation today. I will be talking about beautiful Jamaica and why it's easy for you to sell it. I will also be speaking a little, about, a little bit about their tourism board and why Air Canada should be your number one choice for all your clients' flight needs. But first, a little introduction about myself. My name is Alexis Emerson. I'm a second year student in the Tourism and Travel Services at Algonquin College in Ottawa. I grew up in a smaller city called Burlington, Ontario, with an older sister and amazing parents who have always been very supportive of me. When it came time to choose what I wanted to do with my life, I knew it had to involve my love for travel and getting immersed in the cultures of the world. That is what started my journey at Algonquin College. I have fully enjoyed my course and realized that there are so many avenues of opportunities in the tourism and travel industry. I know in the long run, I want to be working with a sustainable company to help better the world. And now I very much appreciate the opportunity for a chance to become a tourism and travel representative for Baxter Media, as I know Baxter can offer opportunities to connect with people in the industry and help me learn so much more. The opportunities for firsthand learning and development at a professional level are truly exciting and I would consider it an honor to be included. Enough about me though, as today I will be focusing on some awesome travel opportunities with Air Canada and Travel to Jamaica. First, there are many interesting topics to cover about Jamaica. First, I will be talking about interesting facts about Jamaica, Jamaica's history, Jamaican culture, tourism in Jamaica, who does Jamaica appeal to, travel tips and requirements, why is Jamaica an easy sell to clients, the Jamaica Tourist Board, and traveling to Jamaica via Air Canada. Now, what's the first thing that comes to your mind when I say Jamaica? Probably something along the lines of hot, sun, beaches, Bob Marley, Rasta colors, and great reggae music? Well, all of those are correct. Jamaica is the third largest island in the Caribbean. It is 10,831 square kilometers of mountains, rainforest, and reef lined beaches. Jama Jamaica's volcanic based land development makes for hills and mountains that over the years have been covered with lush greenery. The highest mountain peak being 2,256 meters high is called Blue Mountain. Jamaica's warm climate and basins at the foot of the mountains that have rich soils provide prime productive growing land for their main exports of bananas, coffee, and sugar. Even with hurricane season being from early June to late November, Jamaica benefits from lovely warm weather year round as it sits right in the Caribbean. Jamaica's land has so much to offer to every kind of client. It is known for its reggae music, beautiful beaches, ongoing sunshine, luxurious golf courses, friendly people, and so much more. Now onto a bit of Jamaica's history. Jamaica sits right under Cuba in the Caribbean Sea. Before Jamaica was even discovered in 1494 by Christopher Columbus, the island was called Ex Maca, meaning land of wood and water, inhabited by the indigenous Arawak Indians for about 2,000 years. All of this changed when the Spanish colonized the island, ran out the Arawak people, and replaced them with African slaves, defining the island's culture today. After this, the Spanish left Jamaica in the wake of the British, who turned Jamaica into one of the British Caribbean slaving colonies. This brought in thousands more African slaves through the port, 
of what is now the capital Kingston. Yet a magnificent event happened in 1834. Slavery was abolished. It was at this point when Jamaica started to be considered a modern nation. After years and years of being colonized, Jamaica finally became independent on the 6th of August, 1962. The liberation brought joy and music to the island. Now onto a little bit of the culture of Jamaica. The culture is mixed thanks to the, the, the diverse society that steam, stems from the history of Spanish, British, and African people. Jamaicans embrace their culture as they should. They have so many things to be proud of. Jamaica's unique culture is what lures so many tourists to the destination. Religion is a huge part of Jamaica's culture. In fact, there are more churches per square mile than anywhere else in the world. Christianity is celebrated throughout the island, but many other religions are very accepted and practiced, including Rastafarianism. Rastas adopted the colors red, yellow, and green as the color of the Rastafarian movement and are very recognizable as part of Jamaica, Jamaican culture. The red stands for the blood of the black martyrs that was shed around the world during their struggle for liberation, equal rights, and justice. Yellow represents the wealth of the homeland Africa, particularly the gold, and the green stands for the beauty of greenery and of the land. The official language in Jamaica is English. However, they do have their local dialect that combines elements of other languages from Spanish and African dialects to Irish, British, and American phrases. This mixture of language is called Jamaican patos. Jamaican food is delicious, combining bold flavors with island spices. Jerk chicken is famous for its fiery flavoring of chicken spiced with scotch bonnet peppers and thyme, pepper, cinnamon, cloves, and allspice. Also very popular is their authentic goat's head soup and cow foot stew. Although North Americans are often hesitant because of the dish names, yet a lot of their seasonings are common in North America, so it's not a culture shock to your client's tongue. Jamaicans have also always loved and celebrated with music. They are well known for their uplifting steel drum beats. Jamaica is also famous as the birthplace of reggae and its capital Kingston, is the home to the Bob Marley Museum dedicated to the famous singer. In 2017, over 4.3 million tourists visit Jamaica, and this number is expected to keep growing each year. This makes tourism Jamaica's highest source of income. Part of this is based on how easy it is to get to Jamaica, whether by plane or by cruise ship. Now here are just some of the tourism highlights of Jamaica. As mentioned, the tropical climate is one of the top of many vacationers' travel checklist. They have the average temperature is 27 degrees to 29 degrees Celsius, and the weather is very vacation friendly with there rarely being long periods of rainfall. November and December are especially enjoyable with hurricane season finishing. January to March are also beautiful weather-wise, but much busier being peak travel season. It's perfect for the, that client who is looking to escape the cold weather in, can, in Canada. I know I'm ready to leave the cold behind. With Jamaica being a big island of hundreds of miles of coastline, there are over 50 public beaches in Jamaica, but some are more famous and a big draw for vacationers. Seven Mile Beach or Negril Beach is one of the most beautiful and desirable. Its shorelines include groves of coconut palms and beautiful resorts. It is a hot spot for sunbathers with lively music always in the background. There are several areas dedicated to nude sunbathing for the full sun seekers. In Montego Bay, beautiful Doctor's Cave Beach was made famous in the 1920s after a doctor donated his beachfront and it was claimed that the waters had curing powers. Tourists have never stopped flocking to the beach that was once accessible via a cave, since then has unfortunately been destroyed by a hurricane. There is a small entry fee to cover the upkeep by the beach club, but it is well worth it. Just down from Doctor's Cave Beach is a quieter stretch of sand known as the Cornwall Beach. It also has a small fee for entry, but is worth it for the beautiful beach and great swimming area. On Cornwall Sundays, beachgoers can have a bottomless Appleton rum mug. This is a beach you'll definitely see me sunbathing at. These are just a small example of the variety of options for beachgoers. For additional low-key adventures, there are beautiful lush golf courses, diving instruction, and ample snorkeling opportunities. 
Families will enjoy river tube rides, river tube rides, and swimming with the dolphins, to name just a few of the luring experiences. For visitors wanting some adventurous things to do, Jamaica does not disappoint. From zip lining in the rainforest to hiking up and down uh, cascading waterfalls, underwater cave exploring, cliff diving off Negril Cliffs, and an ATV safari ride through an 18th century plantation, there are many thrill seeking oppor opportunities. Jamaica is a lush island teeming with attractions for nature lovers. Just some of the most popular include at Dunn's River Falls, guides will take you to the top of the falls to watch them tumble down rocks to the sea. You can also hike to the base and soak in the refreshing pools at the bottom. Reach Falls are another of many of the beautiful waterfalls. The Reach Falls, however, are in the montane forest surrounded by rainforests. There are also underwater caves to explore. The Blue Hole near Ochos Rios is high in the rainforest mountains. It is actually a series of water holes fed by gushing cascades. Mayfield Falls and Mineral Springs are near Negril and consist of two falls and 21 natural pools surrounded by tropical flowers, ferns, and rainforest flora. Blue Mountain Peak, Jamaica's highest peak, is one of the best places for hiking. It is also known as being home to the Blue Mountain Coffee. There are many options for, over, for getting to a spectacular island view from hiking or biking to vehicle. I personally can't wait for the day when I get to hike to the top and see the magnificent views. Jamaica is feel, filled with beautiful architecture and ancient sites for the history buffs. Blue and John Crow National Park crosses over between a beautiful nature attraction and historic site. In 2015, it was listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Once a refuge for former slaves to escape slavery, it includes jungle covered mountains, waterfalls, lush rainforest, coffee plantations, exotic plants, and animals. Rose Hall in Montego Bay is a restored plantation house built in 1770 and has a beautiful ocean view. It was once ruled by the cruel slave owner, Annie Hall, who was met with a violent death. There are many tales of hauntings that also draw tourists to the site. I know personally, I can't wait to tour the spooky land. Fall Mouth Town is a 19th century town which was once a leading port. It is surrounded by sugar estate and cattle land. Tourists are attracted to the town era and some famous locations including the Greenwood Great House built in 1790 by a relative of, El of Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Spanish Town, the first capital of Jamaica, was developed by the English after they overthrew the Spanish settlers. A tour of the Spanish Town Square shows some of the most stunning Georgian architecture in such structures as the courthouse, house of embassy, and the king's house, the official residence of the then governor of the island. Now onto the travel tips and requirements in Jamaica. Jamaica is an easy country to travel to without too many requirements. For Canadian citizens, you are required to have a passport that is valid for your intended stay. You will also be required to have sufficient funds for your stay. You also do not require a visa if traveling for leisure, but if you travel for business or school, you will be required to get a visa. There are no mandatory vaccinations for nationals of Canada, but it is recommended to get the vaccination against yellow fever. For Canadians traveling to Jamaica, like many vacation spots, it is a good idea to not carry large amounts of cash on you or wear expensive jewelry. You especially don't want to lose those diamond earrings in the ocean. Being a tourist, you should also be careful of walking alone at night, but this is just like in any other foreign country. Most of the water is safe to drink, but if you're in a far-flung rural area, just make sure the water has been purified first. Otherwise, you're good. Lastly, make sure to secure your personal travel documents in the hotel room, like one always should. Now, why is Jamaica easy to sell? Well, whether your clients are in search of adventure, action, or relaxation, Jamaica is perfect and for those who, and the, who doesn't want the warm, salty air blowing in their hair. The grill is known for its beautiful Seven Mile Beach. Montego Bay is where the action happens, and Ochos Rios is ideal for jungle adventures. Kingston has a scenic waterfront, historic buildings, and excellent restaurants and art venues. These are just some of the reasons why it's easy for travel agents to sell Jamaica as a destination. Jamaica is great for everyone, whether families, couples, friends, wedding parties, or business colleagues. 
There are the romantic resorts and spectacular beaches, the luxurious golf courses and amazing music, and so much more. Jamaica also has an exceptional range of accommodations, with most of them being large beachfront resorts with sports and a wide range of entertainment that will be hard to not have an amazing time with. Jamaica is where Sandals Resorts started, so it's especially easy to sell to clients who only love to stay at Sandals Resorts. Why not go where it all started? There are exquisite beach hotels with old colonial styles and luxury hotels embedded in traditional Caribbean styles. With all the beachfront accommodations, Jamaica is a very popular spot in the Caribbean for destination weddings. You can get the perfect photos on the beaches and give all your guests the perfect spot to stay right on the beautiful turquoise water. Jamaica is also perfect for any kind of client, whether an adventure tourist, leisure vacationer, culture seeker, music lover, and so many more. Now a little bit about the Jamaican Tourists Board. The Jamaican Tourist Board was founded in 1955 and is Jamaica's national tourism agency based in the capital city of Kingston. They are a public company governed by a board of directors appointed by the Minister of Tourism. The Jamaica Tourist Board is charged with the mission of marketing the tourism product so that Jamaica remains the premier Caribbean tourism destination. Their goal on the Jamaica Tourist Board is to become the best tourism des and travel destination as measured by the international marketplace, which they are working hard, hard on and accomplishing each and every day. Jamaica has also been working on the Vision 2030 Jamaica National Development Plan which is their first long-term sustainable plan. Their goal is to create the conditions in which their productive enterprise are able to generate greater levels of wealth and in which the social and environmental conditions and the general well-being of the society are enhanced. With this, they are also inspiring tourists to explore outside of the resorts to help the local communities benefit more. This is going to be an amazing accomplishment for Jamaica bringing in so many more tourists and helping their local communities prosper. Great, so you sold your clients on a fantastic Jamaican getaway. How will you get them there? This is where I want to recommend and discuss the benefits of flying with Air Canada. And I have plenty of information to provide you with, the proper rationale to support your recommendation. Air Canada was established in 1937. Being Canada's national airline, it offers many opportunities to Jamaica. Canadian flights leave through the Toronto hub and travel over 4,800 kilometers to Montego Bay or Kingston. Why choose Air Canada to take you to Jamaica? Well, one good reason is that Air Canada is the 10th in the world for on-time flights. It holds a four-star airline rating with Star Trek, whose customer opinion survey named Air Canada as North America's top airline in 2017 for the sixth time. Air Canada offers several ways to check in for your flight. 12 to 24 hours in advance, so that clients can choose the option that suits them best, whether it's by the web, mobile phone, or airport, airport kiosk. They're also known for their in-flight entertainment. Their fleet is large, with 174 currently in service and constantly being updated. Their aircrafts include Airbus models, Boeing models, and Embraer models, with Bombardier models on order. Air Canada is also committed to, co to corporate responsibility, helping hundreds of charities, both in Canada and throughout the world, through its Air Canada Foundation. At home, employees also donate their time to local charities through Air the Air Canada Volunteer Impro Involvement Program. Now, can't you see Air Canada is definitely the perfect airline to fly your client to Jamaica? Jamaica is an amazing country with so many positive factors to it, so why not sell it? There is literally something for everyone, and a lot of hotels and resorts offer tours and excursions to help your clients see and do whatever they want. Everyone will find something in Jamaica that they will fall in love with and never want to leave. Once you've been there once, you always want to go back. I know I'll be seeing you and your clients there soon. I would like to say thank you for all for taking the time today to listen to my webinar. If anyone has any questions, I would love to take the time to answer them. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alexis. Thank you. So we'll take a few minutes now to answer any questions that the viewers may have. Of course. And once again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to submit them to the Q&A box found in your Zoom toolbar. And if you hover your mouse around, that black Zoom toolbar should pop up, and then just 
click the button that says Q&A. Then I'll read them out for Alexis then. Perfect, thank you. So Ian Stalker here at Baxter Media has a question. Hi yeah. Alexis, have you actually been to Jamaica? Um, unfortunately, I personally have not been to Jamaica. I know both my parents have and I've seen multiple photos from their trips and they absolutely loved it. And I most honestly, Jamaica is in one of my top three destinations I want to visit. So I plan to get there sooner than later. Okay, terrific. Do you, uh, okay, I'll put you on the spot here. It's okay. If you, if you were to go, which uh, part of the uh, island would you visit? Great question. Um, I think I'd probably go into the Montego Bay area, um, just because I know a lot of the action happens there. Um, being, I guess, a young adult, I feel like that would just be a fun area for me to stay in. Um, I also like the idea, though, that I would definitely want to go to Jamaica for a longer period, I guess, um, for staying, because I definitely love to travel to some of the mountains and definitely see a lot of the culture in the island. Um, but I'd probably stay in the Montego Bay area, I guess. Okay, terrific. Thank you. Thanks, Alexis. And Carol says, Alexis, well done. Very comprehensive. I've been to Jamaica and you represented it very well. Thank you so much. We'll just allow another minute or two for people to submit any questions that they may have. Yeah, for sure. No problem. Hi, Alexis. It's Ian Stalker again. The, Hi. Um, is, are, are you did mention quite a few activities in your presentation. Very good. If you were to go to Jamaica, is there anything that you might um, opt for? Diving or zip lining or uh, cave yeah. explorations? Yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm definitely someone who really enjoys adventure. Um, so, yeah, stuff. Like, I also love to be in the water. So something like cave exploring, snorkeling, swimming with the dolphins would be amazing. And I know I would absolutely love ziplining through the rainforest because I do adore animals and just beautiful nature. So that'd be like a great way to see a lot of Jamaica and, you know, get my chance to see cute little animals and all the beautiful flowers and everything. Okay, terrific once again, thank you. Thank you. And uh, Alexis, when putting this presentation together, what was the hardest part of your uh, of your preparation, preparing for this webinar? Um, I think the hardest part was honestly trying to pick and choose the right information to talk about. Because Jamaica has so much to offer, and when you're kind of set with a bit of a deadline time-wise, it's hard to not want to talk about everything. Like, there's just so many amazing factors to Jamaica and so much to see and do. So I guess it was kind of hard to choose which items I was going to talk about. Obviously, I wanted to talk about um, the main things that draw in a lot of tourists, but there was definitely some other interesting things that I read about and learned about that I just didn't have time, unfortunately, to add them in. But yeah, I, I guess that was probably the hardest part. Otherwise, um, it was I learned so much, and it was really great to be looking everything up. Great. Thanks, Alexis. Thank you. And Ra Raquel, uh, Raquel asks, uh, what would you tell someone if they said they were afraid of traveling to Jamaica? Um, I would probably, like if it was a client for myself or for someone I knew, um, I would tell them not to fully worry. Jamaica is a lot like any other country that you're going to travel to. Um, I know Jamaica hasn't always had the best reputation in the past, 
but that's also in the past. It's gotten better, and everyone in Jamaica is working on it. I would definitely tell them if they're a little bit more nervous, maybe for the first time they go, stick more towards the resorts and go with a friend or a family. Um, if they do just want to go alone, I would tell them just to venture out as much as they feel comfortable with. Um, maybe not at night per se if they're nervous, but um, you know, kind of stick to the main areas and they would be nice and safe and good. Great, thank you. Thank you. So it looks like that's all the questions for today. So I'd like to thank everyone that took the time to tune into the webinar today. And Alexis, thank you again so much for your presentation. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for participating in the 2019 Baxter Student Ambassador Program. You take care and we'll be in touch. Thank you, have a good one everyone. You too, take care. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>